Hey guys, Common Sense Outdoorsman here. Today I want to talk about the 10 C's and not so much give an entire presentation on the 10 C's because I think that's been covered well enough by Dave Canterbury and um, he has a fantastic presentation on the 10 C's and it's not that he is the inventor of these items and the first to use these items. No, he's not, but um, I give him a lot of credit for putting together a fantastic presentation on the 10 C's and how they can be important to you in your outdoor escapades. So yeah, very good stuff and a very good presentation from Dave Canterbury. So I would definitely recommend you watch his videos on that topic and you know, one thing he talks about is that your tendencies or your survival items or what you carry in your area is always going to be situational. What I put emphasis on in my area and what I do, you may not put emphasis on in your area. And I think that's really probably the biggest and best point with this is that it really is situational. You know, what I put emphasis on for what I'm doing in my area is completely different from what you may put emphasis on. And um, what I mean by that is you may be in Alaska in July and, you know, going on a hunting trip. And in that case, you may not put much emphasis on a candling device. So, your headlight, maybe you don't even have that. And I've lived in Alaska for three years and I can say I did paint the outside of my house at one o'clock in the morning and cut my grass at that time and stuff like that because I can see. So in that case, you know, a candling device may not even be on your list or you may be going out and following a freshwater river and that's your trip and you're going to stay by the river. So maybe a container drops a few notches on your list because you may be able to drink right from the right from the the stream okay um so things like that it just depends it's situational but i wanna talk about the rank order of the top 10 c's for me in my area and what i do in the colorado rockies and even for me this list is situational but generally, generally, this would be my rank order of the 10C items. And I think the biggest focus is on the first three, or what I'll say is the top three. And these are three items I would not want to be without. But the scenario is going to be if, say, if someone, you know, like you're playing a game and you have the, uh, the arrow spinner that you spin and it lands on a number, we have a number of one through 10. And whatever that spinner lands on, that's the number of items you get to take. So you have to rank order your your items in the in most important to least important for you. So hey, if that pointer lands on number one, um, you have one item to take. If it lands on three, you take your top three, so on and so forth. So thinking that way, this is how I would rank um, my items and. Um, let's talk in general first about the top three, and I'll tell you, uh, and this isn't the rank order yet, but what they are would be for me, a cutting tool, a combustion device and cover. That's the top three for me in most any scenario for myself, a situation that I can think of. And, um, so, and maybe my situation is, as Dave says, I, I'm just doing some inconvenient camping, not really a survival situation, but I didn't intend on being out overnight or for two nights or something like that. But I have some things with me and I'm not really in a uh, survival mode, but, um, you know, I'm just camping uncomfortably, so to speak. Okay. And um, so those are the three big items, the big top three. And the way I would rank order them for myself, and let's, and this may be surprising to you, but number one for me would be cover, okay? And now 
what da the way Dave explains it is that in these 10, these are 10 categories and you should actually have multiple items in these categories. So, and part of cover is also what you have on, what you're wearing. So I'm going to assume that I am dressed appropriately for the season and I have hats, gloves, um, the proper outer gear, maybe rain gear, a coat the proper footwear, so on and so forth. And also the items I'm going to have in my pocket, as you know, I'm already going to have multiple knives in my pockets. I'm going to have a flashlight, probably a lighter, and um, small items like that. So just with what I'm wearing to take care of my cover, or to take care of me so I don't suffer from what? I don't suffer from exposure. Um, I'm going to already have things on and things in my pockets to take care of me. So I'm going to assume that's how I'm starting off. Okay. Um, you know, and, and you should have, if you're going to have a cover item, think in, uh, multiple uses for that item. So it may be something that has orange on it that you can signal with certainly something reflective like this Mylar, uh, space blanket. Okay. And probably the main piece of cover for me would be a grabber type, uh, tarp or blanket. It's fairly tough. It's got the Mylar side on one side to reflect heat and it's got uh, a color on the other side. So maybe it could be orange for signaling. You cover more than one, one category there. So the first thing you're going to normally you're going to suffer from is exposure. You have to keep your core temperature as such. And the first thing that's going to get you ordinarily, I'm not talking about safety things like, yeah, you could get shot or you could fall off a cliff or you could injure yourself in a catastrophic way. But uh, odds are that's not the way you're going to go. Typically in most survival situations, um, people first of all will, will, perish because of exposure. So that's where the odds are at for me. So the first thing I want to have besides my proper clothing and what I got in my pockets is some cover items. Okay. That's number one. I feel like here in Colorado, if I was dressed properly and I had a cover item to keep the snow or the rain or the wind off of me, if in case I can't find a natural shelter or build one quick enough, a cover is going to be number one for me. And uh, that may be a little surprising to most of you, but let's talk about the next two. What we have left is a cutting tool and a combustion device. And this may surprise you also for me because I'm a cutting tool kind of guy, but my second choice would be a combustion device. If I have the proper clothing, what's in my pockets, and I have some kind of cover, I think the next thing that's going to help me to survive or do well is the warmth from a fire and the other things that a fire gives you. It's not just warmth. You could uh, cook with it. You can boil water. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, it's, it's that, you know, um, um, campfire TV, so to speak, it's just going to make you feel all kinds of better protection from animals, what have you. But the next item I'm going to want to have is a combustion device. I feel like I can get a fire started without my knife here in the Colorado Rockies. There's plenty of ways to do it. So if I had cover in my combustion device, I am fairly a happy camper, okay? And, um, you know, and a lot of these things, a lot of these items are going to have combination type um, aspects to them. For example, this is my famed five-in-one, or I call it an actual six-in-one tool, but this is something that I always like to carry because it gives you the signal device, You've got a compass that works. This compass is just a basic, simple compass. It's going to point north. It's not an orienteering compass. You're not going to shoot a bearing or an azimuth with this. But do you really need to do that? That depends on you. I'm fairly good with, with uh, direction in the woods. I'm one of those people that kind of has a knack for that. If I know which way north is 
and I've studied the area and I have a map and I know what the, um, uh, you know, what the uh, landmarks are and, and certain things like that. For, for example, if I'm, if I'm um, going into an area and there's a road down here and I come in on this road and up on this side is a mountain range and up on this side is a railroad track and I'm coming in from the south, I'm going to pretty much know where I am in this area. And I'm going to know that if I very, come over to the, to the uh, west a little bit, that if I go south, I'm going to hit that road, and I'm just going to take a left-hand turn, and I'm going to be able to get to my car. I know the railroad track is here, and mountain range is here. I can see the mountains, so that gives me a general uh, idea of where I'm at. And so as long as I know where north is, I'm going to be pretty good. I'm not talking about, you know, when you're trying to get out of a situation, you're not trying to find a flag like you will in navigation courses. You don't have to shoot a bearing and try to pace yourself and stay on a perfect line, you know, you just need to get to a major landmark so you'll know where you're at and that you can get out. So for a combustion device, and this is a combustion device because it has a little, a little um, ferrocerium rod on there, and then you can also put combustion devices inside of it. You could put matches in there, a striker, tinder, what have you, and then this takes care of some signaling. You have a mirror, and uh, you even have some cordage here. So <clears throat> if this was my combustion device, it gives me multiple uses. So I would take something like that. This ferro rod, you'd have to put this down in your tinder, get your tinder right up to that rod and scrape it on there. If you have trouble with that, I would almost take my knife and dig it out of the glue and take that ferro rod and and put it in a, uh, on a piece of wood, make a little line on there, get it on a piece of wood, and then scrape it from there. But anyways, going back to the combustion device, if this was my combustion de device, I have multiple other uses. It takes care of my compass and other things. One thing that uh, Dave and a lot of other outdoorsmen talk about, make sure your item has multiple uses. So that's number two for me the combustion device and of course now you can figure out number three the cutting device okay and uh and a survival type or style knife or whatever cutting device you have i'm not saying it has to be a knife maybe for you it's an axe maybe for you it's a saw um it could be anything maybe it's a multi-tool Whatever you want for a uh, cutting device, whatever works for you in your area, whatever, whatever you're happy with and skilled with will work. For me, it would be a survival type knife or one that has such attributes that it'll be able to take care of um, survival tasks. Okay, so that's my top three. Now, let's go on to the next one, and I'll go faster and faster as these items, to me, become less important. So, for the top five Cs, we have two left. We have a container and cordage, and I'm going to say my number four would be cordage, say like this um, uh, paracord here. And the reason for that is I think a cover is important for me. And when you're using a cover, you can wrap it around you, wrap yourself in it like a taco, or maybe put it up as a uh, covering from rain. And in order to do that, cordage comes in handy. So uh, I'm thinking that most survival scenarios are one night, maybe two. So even for that amount of time, you could get away without water. So I'm going to put the cordage as number four, and I'm going to put my water container as number five. But those top five items for me certainly are the most important, and those are the type of items that I would like to have. And again, think of multiple items and multiple uses. Uh, maybe you have more than one container. Maybe you have more than one type of cordage. But in general, those are what the items are, okay? So, and then we're left with the uh, last five of the 10 Cs. Um, so we're talking about, and these aren't the order yet, candling device, a cloth, sail, needle, a compass, um, 
cargo tape or duct tape and a cotton bandana. So those are the items we have left. For me, in the Colorado Rockies, number six, after those first five, I'm going to say a compass. And Dave recommends a compass like this, and so do others, where it has the mirror. If you didn't have something like this and you needed a mirror, this is a great mirror. This also has a magnifying glass on it. Now, to me, the magnifying glass to start a fire on here on a compass like this is kind of poor, and I wouldn't rely on it. I'm going to rely on my specific combustion device items, which is going to be multiple items. It'll be, you know, matches, a lighter, maybe a ferro rod, that type of thing. I'm going to get a fire started. So I don't have a lot of faith in the compass on this to start a fire. If, if it was that warm and sunny to where I could use this magnifying glass that well, maybe I don't need a fire. I don't know. But anyways, so this has the mirror on it. Not only are you trying to, um, shoot an azimuth with this uh, or get your bearing, but also to look at yourself with this mirror to signal, to see what kind of injuries you may have on your face if you have to attend to that. Um, but compass, fairly important. I'm pretty good with, like I said, pretty good with um, navigation and knowing where I'm at. But yeah, I would put a compass for me as number six. And this one also came with a cool little um, light if you needed it and it also has an inclinometer on there and it has a global uh, needle for the compass and does other things so yeah a compass like that would also be a good choice so that's my number six number seven for me would be a candling device and again i'm not in alaska so this is generally speaking but if you you know if you had to travel at night or if you had to you know take care of an injury that you've got and it's nighttime a light and typically i would at least have a good uh headlight okay like this that has multiple functions and uh that uh works well for me I like to have a candling device. So that's number seven for me. Number eight would be a cotton bandana. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go over all the multiple things you can do with a cotton bandana. It's a great item. Uh, yeah, I have one in just about all my packs. So cotton bandana for me is number eight. And then we come down to the last two, uh, cargo tape or duct tape and a cloth sail needle, needle, cloth sail needle. And to be honest, I've never used in my outdoor days, I've never used a needle. I've never used a sail needle. I haven't had a need to use it. And so to me, the, uh, sail needle or some kind of a large needle, um, would be last. That would be my number 10, and the duct tape would be number 9. Duct tape could, I think, right off the bat, it could repair your your cover piece. That's my number 1. If that was to, to tear or become destroyed, I could use my duct tape to fix that. You can use it for bandages. You can use it for fire start. All kinds of repair things. Repair your clothing, your shoes, whatever. So, the duct tape would be number nine for me, and the sail needle would be number 10, okay? And again, for these 10 items, it doesn't really, um, you know, it's not just one item, but it could be a group of items. So for your cutting tool, it could be a saw, it could be a multi-tool, it could be an ax, whatever it is. But if you have multiple items in these 10 categories, you're pretty much going to be very well set. So Dave Canterbury, um, is Dave Canterbury right about these 10 C's? He sure is. He's dead on with that. I have not seen a better presentation of the 10 C's. You may have, if you have, let me know in the comments who has given a better presentation on the 10 C's than, than Dave Canterbury. He's not the inventor. He just packaged it in a way that is easily understandable to anybody and um, has done a lot of people, I think, a, a lot of good who are doing things in the outdoors. Okay, so 
Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your rank order is. And if you want, just give me your, your top three or your top five ranked order items. You don't have to go with 10. But let me know what your rank order is of these items. And let me know also if you know of someone who has come up with a good original presentation on the 10 C's that's uh, just as good or maybe even better than Dave Canterbury's. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Common Sense Outdoorsman. We'll talk to you later. Bye.